Good morning. Uh, this is a wonderful day because it is a day that we celebrate our risen Savior. And so I want to say to all of you, happy Resurrection Sunday. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Our text this morning is coming from John the 19th chapter and the 30th verse. And of course, as always, I encourage you to follow along um, in the word of God so that you can read it for yourself. And that way there won't be any issues. You don't have to say the preacher said, you can say I read it for myself. John the 19th chapter, the 30th verse. And it reads, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Amen. This morning, I simply want to tag our text, it is finished. Um, it is only a few days from Palm Sunday to the crucifixion. And we see how fickle the world's praise is. One day you are crowned, and they sing in Hosanna to the highest, and the next you find yourself on the cross being crucified. The sound of Hosanna's had hardly died when they were crying away with him, crucify him. Reminds me of an old song some of y'all might know. What they do, they smile in your face all the time. They want to take your place, backstab us. They smile in your face all the time. They want to take your place, the backstab us. And I just believe if the song was out in Jesus' day, he would have been singing the same song, backstab us. They Smile in your face, and they say, Hosanna to the highest. But then when you turn around, they yell and crucify him. There were seven statements that Jesus Christ uttered on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Then he says, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. He says, woman, behold thy son. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He says, I thirst. He says, it is finished. And then he says, into thy hands. But this morning, I simply want to focus on the sixth word, and that is, it is finished. And many people think when you say it's finished, you're throwing in the towel. But I want you to know this morning, when Christ said it is finished, he wasn't throwing in the towel. Because it is finished is a word of completion. Many leave this world with their task uncompleted. The pen dropped from the writer's hand, yet he has a book in his heart and in his mind that he never finished writing out. The painter's brush falls before the painting is done, yet he still or she still has a vision of something that they're trying to create. The chisel tumbles from the grip of the sculpture. But Christ is the great finisher. We see that creation was finished. Genesis, the second chapter, the first verse, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. Then we see the new heaven and earth in Revelation 21 and 6. He says, then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to the one who thirsts from the spring of water of life without 
cross. Not only was creation finished, not only was heaven and earth finished, but redemption was finished. John 19 and 30, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. Bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Redemption was done. Jesus had did all that he needed to do to redeem you and me back to him. What Christ completed on the cross, completed all the requirements of the law. Colossians 2, 14 through 17, and I know we've been studying Colossians, so you're already familiar with this text, but it says, having canceled out the certificate of death consisting of decrees against us, which has hostile to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. When he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. Therefore, no one is to act as your judge in regard to your food or drink or in respect to festivals or new moon or Sabbath day, things which are a mere shadow of what is to come. But the stuff that belongs to Christ. Let no one keep defrauding you of your prize by delighting in self-abasement and the worship of the angels, taking your stand on visions he has seen inflated without cause by his fleshly mind. He has completed all the requirements. Of all. Then not only did he uh, complete the requirements, he completed all the Old Testament sacrifices. Hebrews 10 and 11. Every priest stands daily, ministering and offer time after time the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But he, having offered one sacrifice for sins for all time, For all time, sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time onward until his enemies be made a footstool for his feet. For by one offering he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us after saying, saying this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws upon their heart and on their mind. I will write them. And then he says, and their sons and their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. Now, where there is forgiveness of these things, there is no longer any, any offering for sin. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm so glad that Jesus completed all that needed to be completed as far as sacrifices. We don't have to go to the priest anymore. We don't have to have doves and ox and goats and chickens. He took care of all of that on the cross. Then he completed all the suffering required to pay for our sins. 1 John 1 and 7. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Somebody needs to know. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. Jesus paid it all, paid in full. Your debt has been canceled. Amount has been received. Balance paid, already paid. I don't know about you, but there's no greater feeling when you get a balance statement on a loan that you had, and at the bottom they got that red stamp that says paid in.
go all over and over again trying to take care of those loans that come every month, whether you like it to or not. But, oh, I'm so glad that day came when we got the last statement in the mail for my wife's uh, student loans and my student loans. And I, all I could do was say, thank you, Lord, because I didn't have any more debt. And so Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. It is finished. It's the word of completion. Then secondly, not only is it a word of completion, it's the word of conquest. He cries out, not with a soft cry. The Bible says he cried out with a loud cry. In Matthew, he said it like this, and Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Mark said that Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And Luke said that Jesus crying out with a loud voice said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last breath. It's the word of Conquest. John 19, 30 says, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. It was not a sigh of defeat, but it was a cry of victory. I've done everything that I need to do. Into your hands, Father, I commit myself to you. I've did what you asked me to do. I've met the requirements. He wasn't crying out in defeat. Let it be loud enough for the devil to hear. And let me just pause right there. Somebody this morning needs to cry out and let folks know that they are not defeated. Because they're crying out to a risen faith. was the promise in the Garden of Eden in Genesis 3 and 15. He says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise you on the head and you shall bruise him on the hill. Satan and all his demons were defeated at Calvary. Colossians 2 and 15 says, when he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. I'm reminded what it says in Psalms. Thou preparest a table before thee, thy enemies. You sitting now enjoying your fried chicken, greens, and cornbread, and the enemy's looking and can't touch. He says, thou preparest a table before thy enemies. The call of the crowd, come down from the cross. 10,000 angels stand ready for a call, but Jesus stayed on the cross, defeating Satan. Enough of this defeated Christianity. We are equipped to win. We have a victorious Christ. And because we have a victorious Christ, we are victorious. We've already won. And we need to quit living like we're losing. We have already won the battle. So many times in sports, I've played many of sports over the years. And I like to think that when I was getting on the wrestling mat, I already knew what the end was going to be. I already knew that whoever got on the mat with William Lyons was going to be defeated. And most of the time, that 
was grace. But there were a few cases that I didn't win, and, and so I did not know. But in this Christian journey, I already know that Christ has fought the battle. He has won the battle. And now we just have to walk in his footsteps. Because it's already been won. It's a word of completion. It is a word of conquest. Then, finally, it is a word of comfort. And I don't know about you, but when you're sick and when you're down, you always want some encouraging words. Uh, you want uh, somebody to come and just say something nice to you. Even if they're looking at you, your arms broke, you're in a cast, and you're all messed up. Yeah, you want them to come and, and not really lie, but just, you don't look too bad. You look all right. And, and, and you want some kind of comfort to let folks know it's going to be all right. And I'm here to tell you this morning that it is finished is a word of comfort. I don't know about you, but I'm getting excited about uh, it is finished because Christ has done everything that needs to be done. It is a word of completion, a word of comfort, but most of all, it is a word of comfort knowing that Christ is finished with the task at hand. He's paid everything that needs to be paid. He's done everything that needs to be done for you and for me so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. The debt of sin is really paid. You don't have to worry about getting another bill. It's been paid in full. This is only one word in the Greek, and uh, it, it simply means that it's done. It's the word for tax receipts, paid in full. This is the word that assures peace when you know that your debt is paid in full. There's a peace that comes over you because you know that there's no more debt. It assures us peace. What this must have meant for that dying thief on the cross. He knew who he was. He knew what he deserved. But Jesus gave him a word of peace. This day, you shall be with me in paradise. And then when he says it is finished, he knew that it was done. Gave him peace that surpasses all understanding. What peace this must have brought to his heart. What peace this brings to our heart. They thought death was the end of the story. But I'm here to tell you this morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Someone said it ain't over until the fat lady sings. But I'm reminded that somebody wrote you off this morning. But somebody even put you off this morning. But Jesus was not only knocked down, but was crucified on an old rugged cross. But that wasn't the end of the story. Early one Sunday morning, my Bible says he got out with all power, heaven and earth in his hands. They marched him from judgment hall to judgment hall. They flogged him. They humiliated him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. Put a crown of thorns on his head and a staff in his hand. They bowed and ridiculed his claim to be king. They spat upon my Savior. They beat him on the head with a staff. They ridiculed him. Aggravated his wounds. Forced him to carry the cross until he was exhausted. Escorted him to a terrible place 
for execution. Pierced him in the side. Gave him wine, wine mixed with gall. They crucified my Savior. Gambled his clothes away. Crucified him between two thieves. But we all know that wasn't the end of the story. He said it's finished. He put him in a tomb. And they say it's a barber tomb because he wasn't going to stay there long. And so early, one Sunday morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. And now I can sing the song. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future. And life is worth the living. Just because my Savior lives. Life is worth the living because he lives. Christ paid your debt too. And you ought to trust him with your life. Trust in Christ and be saved. If you don't know him this morning, the Bible says, if you call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. And if you don't know him this morning, Easter Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday morning, is a great time to trust him with your life. We can rest in his finished work on the cross for your sins and my sins. It is finished. Everything that needs to be done for your salvation and for my salvation has been done because it is a word of completion, it is a word of conquest, and it is a word of comfort. God bless you this morning. God keep you.